adding fractions with a common denominator. We have two fractions and here's a model to represent them. We have to add them together. Both of the wholes are divided up into eight parts, so we've got denominators of eight on both of these fractions. In total, we have some number of parts out of eight. We add the shaded parts to find out how many parts we've got, and that's going to be our numerator. Three plus four is seven parts out of eight. If I remove the model and we just focus on the fractions, you can see the denominator is unchanged. It stays as parts out of eight. So you can see when you add fractions, if the denominator is the same, you keep it and just add the numerators. In this example, we've got six parts out of 10 plus two parts out of 10. Six plus two is eight parts out of 10. But then I can say to you, I want you to reduce your fraction to its lowest terms. If you've watched my other films on fractions so far, you'll say to yourself, I know what to do here. Eight and 10 are both even numbers, so they can be divided by two. I can simplify this fraction. And when you divide top and bottom by two, you get four over five. That is a simplified fraction. It is now reduced to its lowest terms. The rule is, if you can reduce a fraction to its lowest terms, have a Nike moment and just do it. And you may be asked to add more than two fractions together, like this. Four sevenths plus two sevenths plus five sevenths. Here's a quick way of laying this out so you don't make any mistakes. And I use this myself all the time. I have a common denominator of seven, so I know my answer will be something over seven. I'm going to extend the fraction bar. Then I write in my numerators over the top, four plus two plus five. This strategy is designed to make sure students don't make the mistake of accidentally adding denominators. And you know, we never add the denominators. Next, you just add it up. Four plus two is six, plus five is 11. We get 11 over seven. That's the numerators added, but now we've got an improper fraction, so it won't do. But that's okay, because you know how to change it to a proper fraction, don't you? Remember how? The denominator is seven. That means there's seven parts in one whole. How many groups of seven are there in 11? Well, there's one lot of seven and what's left over? Count it up, eight, nine, 10, 11, four left over. And that's our numerator. Put that back over the original denominator of seven and we're done. Our answer is one and four sevenths. Practice adding fractions with a common denominator and then come back and watch me add fractions with different denominators. See you next time.